Good morning everybody. This is Krista with Magnolia Ridge Farm and Gardens. I want to give you a little context before I show you the clips that I recorded uh, two days ago. I was on the farm with my dad and we were seed starting. So you will probably see a lot of different channels that are seed starting right now. It is that time of year, especially in the south, because we are getting our brassicas, things that can tolerate the cold. We're starting those things because those can go out before your last frost. So we're probably four to six weeks away from being able to put out seedlings for brassicas or for starting them from seed, but it's easier with those things if they you have a stronger seedling because then you're gonna get growth faster because the um, <clears throat> they can germinate where it's a little bit warmer. So. I do things a little bit different and this probably stems from my background. My grandfather was a tobacco and cattle farmer. So um, he grew and started tobacco and grew it for this area of North Carolina was huge in the cigarette industry. And so he grew tobacco for the cigarette companies like RJ Reynolds Tobacco and stuff like that. And then he raised beef cattle. So we have started seeds the way they started basically tobacco plants, which I was a little young to remember them actually starting the tobacco this way. However, I have always grown up with these are tobacco flats. And they are actually very similar to hydroponic plug trays that you can find today they're like you can go to tractor supply or amazon and they're they rate they're about forty dollars but they're basically styrofoam trays that float and you plant in them so we start our seeds hydroponically now i do start peppers and stuff a more traditional method with grow lights and seed mats uh, heat mats because they do need a lot more warmth but for a lot of things like tomatoes and flowers and brassicas onions things like that we start them hydroponically using the tobacco seed trays so a lot of people will call them styrofoam floater trays or hydroponic seed trays or hydroponic plug trays they're pretty much all the same thing and it just depends on the medium that you use inside them so let me show you what i'm talking about so my garden's a little messy right now i know that we're in the process of rebuilding our greenhouse and you know getting everything done from the winter but these are hydroponic trays so and you know mine are old because they were tobacco trays but they last for years and years so there's a couple different sizes i think total there's probably four sizes but all of ours are pretty much these two sizes so there's one that's like slightly smaller and i don't know the the actual dimensions the sizes of these um, and then there's one that's a little bit bigger so you can obviously put more plants in this one than you can in this one, but I believe this is a 200 cell. So it's uh, 10 squares this way and 20 squares this way, so 200. And then this one, I believe is 12 squares this way and 24 squares this way. So that would be, what, 288? So almost 300 plants in, starts in this one and 200 in this size and I, like i said i believe there's actually another size but we we mostly have this size so you plant your you put your seed starting mix which i get mine from my local nursery here and it is a seed starting mix that they put together and you you lightly put it in and i'm going to show you this on the video with my dad but you fill it in and then you dimple the dirt and you put your seeds in and you can either write on these or number these and keep a log of what's in each numbered row or I just use these little tags right here this is one from last year so you can see the dirt in it which is all you know matted down now because it's been sitting outside and so you dump this and start anew and then these to me fit perfectly and I just put one at the start of each row and then plant that whole row or if i want to uh, only have a few cells of something then i can do well that's hard as a rock but i can do this and so i know that everything behind this one is that one and everything behind this one is that one so that's how i do it 
but you can do it in different ways. And then once you get these filled, you float them. So you're going to float these trays in water and they have little tiny holes on the bottom. So the, the soil actually stays moist and your roots will grow down through those little holes and go into the water. And then you, when you pull that plug out, you have this beautiful long strand of roots. And at that point, you can knock the dirt off and put them in a hydroponic tower or any aquaponic system, whatever you want to do. Or you can take the plugs and plant them in the dirt or up pot them. So we typically, like for tomato plants, you're going to take them out. And they're, they're pretty small when you do. And you can up pot them or you can put them directly into the ground depending on how big they've gotten. My dad... He just takes the tray straight into the garden, lets them get really big because the roots grow through. He pulls them out and he puts them straight into the dirt. I tend to up pot mine and baby them a little bit more. So we do things a tiny bit different before I put them out. But I have planted them straight out into the garden directly from these trays. You can do either one. So, but you definitely need to harden them off. And um, I can harden them off a little bit easier than he can. He kind of throws them out there and, you know, lets nature take its course <laughs> um but I'm, I'm a little more i baby my plants a little bit more than he does up on the farm so anyway so let me show you uh, a couple other things because you're gonna see in the video that my dad he has built in his greenhouse his greenhouse is specifically designed for these trays so he has built pools into the bottom of his greenhouse to hold water to float these trays. I do not have that option, so I'm gonna show you what I have found. So these are cement mixer trays that you can get at Lowe's and Home Depot. Now, when I bought mine, they were, I wanna say $13.49, but that was a few years ago, and with inflation, I'm sure they've gone up. Now, this one actually still says large purpose tub, large all-purpose tub. But I found them in the construction area, and they were um, signed as uh, cement mixing trays. And you can see they're like a tapered design on the ends. But they will hold water, and I usually fill it up, you know, like two inches. And then these trays fit perfectly in there with a little room and so they'll they'll float around but this gives me room on the side that I can add water without disturbing the plants. I can add fertilizer to the water which I typically use fish emulsion. Once they have all germinated on are you know maybe an inch up I will fertilize with fish emulsion. But I have several of these trays. A couple of them are actually currently out in there and the ducks are using them because I've been keeping the ducks up more. So um, so yeah, I have several of these trays and so I usually do three or four of these at the beginning of the season of each season in my greenhouse to start seeds. So I think I have four total and my dad actually has in his greenhouse, the, the back stall or the back pool can fit six and a half trays um, he has some trays that he cut in half on uh, his saw and so his back pool fits six and a half trays and then he's got two side pools that I think fit two each so he can do six seven eight nine ten and a half trays in his greenhouse um, but he has much bigger gardens than I do but I don't think he ever does more than about six per season so anyway let me show you the bottoms really quick so that's the bottom of the tray. So you can see how teeny tiny these holes are. So the only thing real, I mean, you might lose a little dirt at first, but once it gets wet, it's not going to, but the roots will come down through, through this system. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the clips here that I recorded with my dad. And it just basically shows you that we have the trays laying on a table and we're putting the seed starting mix that I took with me. Um, I keep it in this blue tote that you've seen under the trays out here in my garden and we put that in we even it out we put the dimples in and we put our labels in and our seeds in and then I take the 
some more soil, like a couple handfuls, and just kind of put it over the top of the tray and gently smooth it out to cover the seeds. I don't like try to cover them with the dirt that's in there or move them around or anything like that. And then we just stick them in the the greenhouse in the prepared tubs. And uh, right now, of course, we've got the heater on in the greenhouse, so it keeps the water from freezing. And I know the day that we were there, it was probably 30 degrees outside, but it was like 75 in his greenhouse. So his the water was fine. Um, the temperature's up. He keeps the heater on. He monitors the heater. He monitors the water level. And it does great. So I will go check on them next week and give you an update in a couple weeks. I'll like uh, monitor the progress of them and show you from start to finish. Uh, not every week, but I'll do another video that shows you what's going on. And so that's how we start seeds. And I, I feel like that's pretty different from the way a lot of people do it because we do it um, in a pretty much a hydroponic ma manner. Now, if you want to grow your plants hydroponically or aquaponically completely so you don't want to deal with the dirt at all because you don't want to have to rinse the dirt and get it off the roots for your tower or your hydroponic tower or something um, you can use something like rock wool or cotton balls and put those in the little holes and then put your seeds in the rock wool or the cotton balls and it acts as medium for you to use uh, without dirt so then once your plant starts growing you just take the rock wool or the cotton balls out from around your roots and you don't have to deal with the dirt. Um, you can also use like coconut coir or something like that that absorbs water. You don't have to use dirt, but because we are planting our seedlings out into dirt, we just use dirt and start it like we normally would if we were not doing it hydroponically. So let's watch this clip of my dad and I um, starting these trays and putting them in and then um, we will go from there. We started got that dimpling device they had and threw it in the garbage. Oh no. You could it was a plant you could sit on it and put a Oh cool. We're filling in floater trays with some dirt. This is my awesome dad. Say hi dad. Hey we are up at the farm today, starting some seeds in his little greenhouse right there, because mine is still out of commission. Mine's made out of junk. Hey, yours has been working for how many years? 15 years. All right, then. Junk is awesome. <laughs> Mine didn't even make it through one year. Apparently, it was made out of junk. <laughs> hey, don't dump all the dirt back in. Or, hmm? don't dump all the dirt on the ground. I'm not. I'm going to take it and dump it. Oh, right. okay. It's a lot easier to film when I'm not trying to film myself. <laughs> and he'd just be camera crew. Start giving everybody directions on what to do. That would be fun.
I've had that for a long time too. That's what I always kept to put my dirt in. Alright, well, I guess we'll just start right here. And, uh, I put a little divots in them. Oh, yeah, we were using the end of the pen. All right, here we go. We have four trays of collards, onions, broccoli, cabbage, kale. I think that's it. And we've got room for a few more trays. But there it is, all done and ready to go. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed watching how we start seeds. I know, again, it's different from what you're probably going to see a lot of um, homesteaders and farmers on YouTube do. I actually tried to find some videos on this method, and I think there was only like two, and they still do it different than we do. So, this is a very old school method. I mean, this is what my grandpa has been doing uh, and probably his father before him because my great-grandpa was a farmer as well but um, I, I only met him when I was really young so this is just what we have done for years and years and years and I have adapted it to my smaller garden as well using the cement mixer so um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing this and if you are interested in trying this method um, let me know. I'll be happy to give you more information. And if you are local to the um, Central North Carolina area and you want to try this, we have tons of these trays and we will never use them all in our lifetime because we no longer do massive production of tobacco or anything. So my sister does have some that are for sale. Um, so you are welcome to contact me and hit me up and um, we would be happy to get you in touch with her and see if y'all can work something out. So Anyway, I hope everybody has a good day and success when you start starting your seeds soon. And I am so excited because garden season has officially started. We have started seeds and I cannot be happier for the garden season 2022. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.